Stephen A. Smith came on and said it. He said, okay, I just, I was waiting for somebody to be pompous and arrogant enough to say it, just so I can come on here and talk about it. He said it. Do they have a degree like, they want my job. Do they have a degree like me? Can they articulate like me? And I tweeted him. I said, I have the same degree in mass communications, and I can articulate as well, and my hairline's not pushed oh, back. Now, oh, now, come on. Boy. Low blow, you know, and so, cheap shot. And my thing is, it could be a cheap shot, but he said he'll come in the locker room and find us 3400 South Water Drive, Pittsburgh, uh, PA, 15 And what three. are you going to do about it if he does? We could talk about it. <laughs> First of all, um, <clears throat> I don't know who in God's name told him he can articulate himself as well as me. I don't know what you're sniffing. You're in another world, but I won't even go there. What I would say is that, <clears throat> unlike Ryan Clark, evidently with his words, I do my homework. I'm not going to disrespect that man like he disrespected me. Skip, you've been on this air with me. Have I ever even uttered his name? No. I have never said a word about Ryan Clark. I have never met Ryan Clark. I do not know Ryan Clark. And I will show up in Pittsburgh when the Steelers give me something relevant to show up for. Okay, when they're winning games or if there's a compelling story, I will be there. Maybe Other they than beat that, Tim Tebow. You may be so, maybe so. But in all seriousness, the reason why I felt the need to address Ryan Clark and his comments uh, really evolve around what he misinterpreted, and I'm offended by what he misinterpreted. His insults towards me, please, man, I'm over 40. I ain't got time for all of that. My issue with him was when he tried to say that I said that athletes are not educated and they can't articulate themselves. The operative word was some. Ryan Clark, can we really deny that? Can we really deny that there are some athletes that are not educated? That there are some athletes who don't necessarily articulate themselves that well? That there are some athletes that flat out make some of us uncomfortable when they are talking in front of the camera because of their ability to engage in dialogue is not as great as we would like it to be? That does not mean most of them. That does not mean all of them. That means some of them. And my question to Ryan Clark, rhetorically, because I'm really not interested in talking to him, would be, why would you feel the need to personalize it? You went to LSU. You were the undrafted free agent picked up by the New York Giants, played to the Washington Redskins, been with the Steelers since 2006. You are the person that has been active in the community for a variety of worthy causes, you and your lovely wife and family. Why would you feel the need to personalize something where your name was never brought up into the equation. Did you personalize it when Ben Roethlisberger got in trouble? No. Did you personalize it when James Harrison got in trouble? No. Did you personalize it when a plethora of NFL athletes were getting arrested for a variety of reasons that had absolutely nothing to do with you? You didn't personalize it then. Did you personalize it when the bounty system came into play and we started questioning whether or not bounties existed throughout the NFL? You didn't personalize it then. When a professional athlete gets into any kind of trouble, where are you then in terms of saying, I'm one of them? How is it that you can personalize something where your name was never brought up, where nobody ever questioned your education, your ability to articulate yourself, or anything like that? Where were you then? If you're going to personalize it because we said it to generically or we said it about some because I emphasize I use the word some, not all, why would you choose to personalize this one? Could it be that you want attention? Could it be that your radio show in Pittsburgh is something that you wanted to draw attention to? I don't know. You're invited on this show on plenty of occasions. We welcome you with open arms. We lit literally welcome you to come here and debate things intelligently. But you didn't choose to do that. Now, he sat there and he said, this address in Pittsburgh, such and such a place, wherever it is, the Steelers facility. Well, I'm sorry, why do I have to look in Pittsburgh? How come you didn't call me if you wanted to have something to say about me? You know our producer, Galen Gordon. You said you text Skip. Did you tell America that you never asked for my number? Did you tell America that you never asked to talk to me? That you didn't show me the common courtesy and decency that if you were going to call me out on a personal level when I have never said anything about you? Did you tell the world that you made no effort to reach out to me whatsoever? That you just wanted to bloviate and talk your nonsense to bring attention to the fact that you were aiming an insult in my direction? That's ridiculous. And I'm going to close by saying this. Skip Bayless and our friends. Skip Bayless has been a journalist for over, ten, uh, for over 
30 years. Let me remind y'all of something. I've been a journalist for 20 years. I'm one at the time of only 21 African Americans in the United States of America that was a general sports columnist. He can speak to how tough that is. I will put my credentials up against anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere in terms of what I do. But more importantly than that, when you want to have a character debate, and I'm not talking just to Ryan Clark here, I'm talking to any professional athlete in this world. The day you want to have a debate about professionalism, integrity, okay, and more importantly, decency. The decency to sit there and call somebody out without even calling them when you're going to come up on the set where he works and talks about him. When you have, want to have a debate about character, you name the time and place and I will show up. It was weak what Ryan Clark did. I'm not knocking him as a person. I don't know him. But what you did was real weak because what you tried to do was say that I called a whole bunch of athletes, dumb and idiots, and you know what, they're not educated and all of this stuff. Some of them are not educated. That is a fact. That is all I said. And I have spent more than two decades defending the black athlete on countless occasions. When you can say that, come talk to me. Up until then, you know what you can kiss. That's all I got to mm. say. Mm. Okay, let me jump in the way you jumped in between me and Jalen a week ago today. You just gave Ryan Clark far more attention than he'll ever deserve. And you don't need to stoop to some of the things you just said because you're way above all of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say for you that I have known you for a long, long time. And one thing about Stephen A. Smith, you have never, ever backed down from one athlete, ever, ever. Any place, any time you got an issue with that guy, he will come and look you right in the eye and discuss it with you. Similarly, I've been the same way. That's the one thing we have in common. Name the place, name the time, we'll be there. I don't like to see you get called out that way because it, it's preposterous to even bring up the notion that you would run from Ryan Clark in the Steeler locker room. Are you kidding me? And to frame this, you got cheap shotted by association that day because Ryan was deeply hurt by the fact that he thought because he came up here to Bristol and did the show with me that we became friends, that we were cool. And he thought that meant that I would go out of my way to protect Ryan Clark on the air. And I was hard on him last year, sometimes overly hard. And I apologized to him for that because I felt like I got carried away in, in the vein of trash talking with Ryan Clark. And he took it almost childishly. He, he came across like a hurt child. So he wanted to come in on Monday and spew all over me, which we gave him the opportunity to do. And it was great. And I think he felt much better about it. But by association, he also decided to cheap shot you out of bounds. Oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up because I know we got to go. Yeah. I don't regret a single word I uttered. And the reason why is this. The only reason I addressed it is not because of what he said about me. I don't care. It's what he said that I said. That I, yeah. that I, somebody pompous and arrogant enough to say that athletes are not educated, mm. you know, and athletes athletes can't articulate themselves. I never said that and never would. I've made a career. I've, ha I've made enemies in the newsrooms at the Philadelphia Inquirer, at the New York Daily News, at CNN, at Fox, and now at ESPN. I defending the black athlete and how dare anybody, anybody question yep. my defense, well of, of, my defense of, of athletes from the African-American community. That really, really got to me. And that is why I felt the need to address it. I'm ready to move on. Well done. And by the way, I will no. not be debating Ryan Clark. I will not be talking about him or Thank anything you. like that based on his performance. We ain't coming. You ain't going to see me debating him here. It ain't happening. He's not worth it. Thank you. Defending yourself. We will leave that right there. I think it's a good time to take a break. But